Assalamu alaikum. How is everybody? Alhamdulillah. Um, Lopez in the house, mashallah, with your 13.99 flex. Um, shall I put the chat on slow mode? Let me know. Or should I wait until I finish and then put it on slow mode? Let me know. Mashallah, Tofu is sending um, nice gestures around. Salam alaikum, everybody. Hope you're all good. I hope your fasts are going easy. Mashallah, Alicia still always likes to start with this little super chat. The message of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said, seeking knowledge is an obligation on every Muslim. Mashallah. Assalamu uh, alaikum, brother Yusuf. Alhamdulillah. Very nice to have you. Um, oh, yeah, all right. I'll do that. I'll do that now. Um, Yusuf, I want to thank you again, mashallah, for your beautiful reputation with the, the brothers, uh, Asadullah and... Um, Jake, if, ever, if no one's seen it, go check out Pondering Souls channel and check out the um, response to Pine Creek. It is absolutely fantastic. Honestly. Made him like a little boy. Right, enable slow mo. Let's go forty seconds. Don't punish you too much. That's done. At least you can chat amongst your tail. That's a great talk. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, it was brilliant, wasn't it? Honestly, I really enjoyed it. Mashallah. Less blubbering, more slathering. Get into it, mate. Inshallah. Just give him some hours. Let people come in. Alhamdulillah. Um, 20 seconds. I'll put on 40 seconds. Um, Pankri hasn't met the wrath of Hamzi yet. I, I, I smell him out. Um, but, you know, it's what it is. Uh, you didn't get a notification unless you didn't see it. Have you ticked the bell? Have you ticked the bell? Right, so just to reiterate something I said yesterday, inshallah, I will, inshallah, be inserting a lot into where I used to say God. Um, because I think we know who we're talking about now if the non-Muslims have been paying attention. Um, also, I, it just felt really peculiar yesterday when I kept saying God, 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 and I think Allah would have been much more appropriate. And also, I think it will sink in when you're talking about Abraham, Solomon, Jacob, Isaac, Ishmael, Jesus, Moses, Abraham, Noah, and then you're saying Allah, 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 Allah. It will kind of connect that when we say Allah, we're talking about the God of Abraham. Um, and I think it's time to, um, I think it's time to sink that in. Do you reckon? Yes, today we're on Surah An-Nisa, inshallah. And I think, even though it's 15 pages, um, we should finish all of it. Um, what did someone just say? Read with tafsir. No, I won't be reading with tafsir. Because it will take forever. Ah, and this has the verse about replacing the skin in hellfire. MashaAllah, that's one of my, um, the intriguing verses for me. MashaAllah. It's so nice to see all the green. You know that. So many of you guys are the members. It's, it's beautiful to see. I'm surprised Gabriel's not a member, though. I thought Gabriel's name would be in green. It's a shocker. Indeed, without further ado, let's start with Sarata and Nisa. 
Alhamdulillah. So I'll do as usual. I'll give you the brief introduction to the surah. So we're on chapter four, An Nisa, uh, which means the woman or the women. This chapter focuses on the rights of women, hence the chapter's name. The law of inheritance, care for orphans, lawful and unlawful women to marry, and standing for justice. See the remarkable example of justice to a Jew in verses 105 to 112. As the chapter progresses, the focus shifts to the etiquette of striving in the cause of God and the relationship between Muslims and the people of the book, culminating in a rebuttal to the claims about the crucifixion and divinity of Jesus. Like the previous and the next chapters, this chapter also deals with the issue, issue of hypocrisy, a common theme in many other Medinian chapters. In the name of God, the most gracious, most merciful. O humanity, be mindful of your Lord, who created you from a single soul, and from it he created its mate. And though he spreads count and through he spends countless men and women, and be mindful of Allah, in whose name you appeal to one another, and honor family ties. Surely Allah is ever watchful over you. Give orphans their wealth when they reach maturity, and do not exchange your worthless possessions for their valuables, nor cheat them by mixing their wealth with your own, for this would indeed be a great sin. If you fear you might fail to give orphan women their due rights if you were to marry them, then marry other women of your choice, two, three, or four. But if you're afraid you will fail to maintain justice, then content yourself with one, all those bond women in your possession. This way you are less likely to commit injustice. Give women you wed their due dowry graciously, but if they waive some of it willingly, then you may enjoy it freely with a clear conscience. Do not entrust the incapable among your dependents with your wealth, which God has made a means of support for you, but feed and clothe them from it and speak to them kindly. Test the competence of the orphans until they reach a marriageable age. Then if you feel they are capable of sound judgment, return their wealth to them. And do not consume it wastefully and hastily before they grow up to demand it. If the guardian is well off, they should not take compensation. But if the guardian is poor, let them take a reasonable provision. When you give orphans back their property, call in witnesses, and sufficient is Allah as a vigilant reckoner. For men, there is a share in what their parents and close relatives leave. And for women, there is a share in what their parents and close relatives leave, whether it is little or much. These are obligatory shares. If non-inherited relatives, orphans or the needy are present at the time of distribution, offer them a small provision from it and speak to them kindly. Let the guardians be as concerned for the orphans as they would if they were to die and leave their own helpless children behind. So let them be mindful of Allah and speak equitably. Indeed, those who unjustly consume orphans' wealth, in fact, consume nothing but fire into their bellies, and they will be burned in a blazing hell. God commands you regarding your children. The share of the male will be twice that of the female. If you leave only two or more females, then share is two-thirds of the estate. But if there is only one female, her share will be one half. Each parent is entitled to one-sixth if you leave offspring. But if you are childless and your parents are the only heirs, then your mother will receive one third. But if you leave siblings, then your mother will receive one sixth. After the fulfillment of bequests and debts, be fair to your parents and children as you do not fully know who is more beneficial to you. This is an obligation from Allah. Surely Allah is all knowing or wise. You will inherit half of what your wife leaves if they are childless. But if they have children, then you share is one fourth of the estate after the fulfillment of bequests and debts. And your wives will inherit one fourth of what you leave if you are childless. But if you have children, then your wives will receive one eighth of your estate after the fulfillment of bequests and debts. And if a man or a woman leaves neither parents nor children, but only a brother or sister from their mother's side, they will each inherit one sixth. But if they are more than one, they all will share one third of the estate after the fulfillment of bequests and debts without harm to the heirs. This is a commandment from Allah and Allah is all knowing, most forbearing. 
These entitlements are the limits set by Allah. Whoever obeys Allah and his messenger will be admitted into gardens in which rivers flow. To stay there forever, that is the ultimate triumph. But whoever disobeys Allah and his messenger exceeds their limits will be cast into hell. To stay there forever and they will suffer a humiliating punishment. As for those of your women who commit illegal intercourse, call four witnesses from among yourselves. If they testify, confine the offenders to their homes until they die or God ordains a different way for them. And the two among you who commit this sin, discipline them. If they repent and mend their ways, relieve them. Surely Allah is ever accepting of repentance, most merciful. Allah only accepts the repentance of those who commit evil ignorantly or recklessly, then repent soon after. Allah will pardon them. And Allah is all-knowing or wise. However, repentance is not accepted from those who knowingly persist in sin until they start dying and then cry, now I repent, nor those who die as disbelievers. For them we have prepared a painful punishment. O believers, it is not permissible for you to inherit women against their will or mistreat them to make them return some of the dowry as a ransom for divorce unless they are found guilty of adultery. Treat them fairly. If you happen to dislike them, you may hate something which God turns into a great blessing. If you desire to replace a wife with another and you have given the former even a stack of gold as a dowry, do not take any of it back. Would you still take it unjustly and very sinfully? And how could you take it back after having enjoyed each other intimately? And she has taken from you a firm commitment. Do not marry former wives of your fathers, except what was done previously. It was indeed a shameful, despicable and evil practice. Also forbidden to you for marriage are your mothers, your daughters, your sisters, your paternal and maternal aunts, your brother's daughters, your sister's daughters, your foster mothers, your foster sisters, your mother-in-law, your stepdaughters under your guardianship. If you have consummated marriage with their mothers, but if you have not, then you can marry them. Nor the wives of your sons, nor the two sisters together at the same time, except what was done previously. Surely God is all forgiving, most merciful. Also forbidden are married women, except female captain in your possession. This is God's commandment to you. Lawfully to you are all beyond these, as long as you seek that with your wealth in a legal marriage, not in fornication. Give those you have consummated marriage with their due dowries. It is permissible to be mutually gracious regarding the set dowry. Surely Allah is all-knowing or wise. But if any of you cannot afford to marry a free-believing woman, then let him marry a believing bondwoman possessed by one of you. Allah knows best the state of your faith and theirs. You are from one another. So marry them with the permission of their owners, giving them their dowries in fairness. If they are chaste, neither promiscuous nor having secret affairs. If they commit indecency after marriage, they receive half the punishment of free women. This is for those of you who fear falling into sin. But if you are patient, it is better for you. And Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. It is God's will to make things clear to you, guide you to the noble ways of those before you and turn you in mercy. For Allah is all knowing, all wise. And it is Allah's will to turn you in grace. But those who follow their desires wish to see you deviate entirely from Allah's way. And it is Allah's will to lighten your burdens for humankind was created weak. O believers, do not devour one another's wealth illegally, but rather trade by mutual consent. And do not kill each other or yourselves. Surely Allah is ever merciful to you. And whoever does this sinfully and unjustly, we will burn them in the fire. That is easy for Allah. If you avoid the major sins forbidden to you, we'll absolve you of your lesser misdeeds and admit you into a place of honor. And do not crave what Allah has given some of you over others. Men will be rewarded according to their deeds and women equally according to theirs. Rather ask Allah for his bounties. Surely Allah has perfect knowledge of all things. And we've appointed heirs to what has been left by parents and next of kin. As for those you have made a pledge to, give them their share. Surely Allah is a witness of all things. Men are the caretakers of women, as men have been provisioned by Allah over women and tasked with supporting them financially. And righteous women are devoutly obedient when alone, protected for what God has Allah has entrusted them with. And if you sense ill conduct from your women, advise them first. If they persist, do not share their beds. But if they still persist, then discipline them gently. 
But if they change their ways, do not be unjust to them. Surely Allah is most high or great. If you anticipate a split between them, appoint a mediator from his family and another from hers. If they desire reconciliation, Allah will restore harmony be between them. Surely Allah is all-knowing, all-aware. Worship Allah alone and associate none with him. And be kind to parents, relatives, orphans, the poor, near and distant neighbours, close friends, needy travellers, and those bonds people in your possession. Surely Allah does not like whoever is arrogant and boastful. Those who are stingy promote stinginess among people. And without Allah's bounties, we are prepared for the disbelievers a humiliating punishment. Likewise, for those who spend their wealth to show off and do not believe in Allah or the last day, and whoever takes Satan as an associate, what an evil associate they have. What harm could have come to them if they had believed in Allah and the last day, and donated from what Allah has provided for them, and Allah has perfect knowledge of them. Indeed, Allah never wrongs anyone, even by an atom's weight. And if it is a good deed, he will multiply it many times over and we will give a great reward out of his grace. And he will give a great reward out of his grace. So how will it be when we bring a witness from every other faith community and bring you, O Prophet, as a witness against yours? On that day, those who denied Allah and disobeyed the messenger will wish they were reduced to dust. They will never be able to hide anything from Allah. O believers, do not approach prayer while intoxicated until you are aware of what you say, nor in a state of full impurity, unless you merely pass through the mosque, until you have bathed. But if you are ill on a journey or have relieved yourself or have been intimate with your wives and cannot find water, then purify yourself with clean earth, wiping your faces and hands, and God is ever pardoning or forgiving. Have you, O Prophet, not seen those who were given a portion of the scriptures yet trade it for misguidance and wish to see you deviate from the right path. Allah knows best who is your enemies and Allah is sufficient as a guardian and he is sufficient as a helper. Some Jews take words out of context and say, we listen and we obey. Here may you never hear. And Rahina playing with words and discrediting the faith. Had they said courteously, we hear and obey, listen to us, said Uzuna, it would have been better for them and more proper. God has condemned them for their disbelief, so they do not believe except for a few. All you who were given the book, believe in what we have revealed, confirming your own scriptures before we wipe out your faces to turning them backwards, or we condemn the defiant as we do to the Sabbath breakers, and God's command is always executed. Indeed, God does not forgive associating others. Indeed, Allah does not forgive associating others with him in worship but forgives anything else of whoever he wills. And whoever associates others with Allah have indeed committed a grave sin. Have your prophet not seen those who falsely elevate themselves? It is Allah who elevates whoever he wills, and none will be wrong, even by the width of the thread of a date stone. See how they fabricate lies against Allah? This alone is a blatant sin. Have your prophet not seen those who were given a portion of the scriptures yet believe in idols and false gods? and reassure the disbelievers that they are better guided than the believers. It is they who have been condemned by Allah, and whoever is condemned by Allah will have no helper. Do they have control over shares of the kingdom? If so, they would not have given anyone so much as a speck on a date stone. Or do they envy the people for Allah's bounties? Indeed, we have given the descendants of Abraham the book and wisdom along with great authority. Yet some believed in him while others turned away from him. Hell is sufficient as a torment. Surely those who reject our signs, we will cast them into the fire. Whenever their skin is burnt completely, we will replace it so they will in constantly taste the punishment. Indeed, God is almighty or wise. As for those who believe and do good, we will admit them into gardens under which rivers flow to stay there forever and ever. There they will have pure spouses and we will, and will place them under a vast shade. Indeed, Allah commands you to return trust to their rightful owners. And when you judge between people, judge with fairness. What a noble commandment from Allah to you. Surely Allah is all hearing, all seeing. O believers, obey Allah and obey the messenger and those in authority among you. Should you disagree on anything, then refer it to Allah and his messenger. If you truly believe in Allah and the last day, this is the best and fairest resolution. Have your prophet not seen those who claim they believe in what has been revealed to you and what was revealed before you? They seek the judgment of false judges, 
which they were commanded to reject, and Satan only desires to lead them further away. When it is said to them, come to Allah's revelations and to the messenger, you see the hypocrites turn away from you stubbornly. How horrible will it be if a disaster strikes them because of what their hands have done? Then they come to you swearing by Allah, we intend in nothing but goodwill and reconciliation. Only Allah knows what is in their hearts. So turn away from them, caution them, and give them advice that will shake their very souls. We only sent messengers to be obeyed by God, Allah's will. If only those hypocrites came to you, O Prophet, after wronging themselves, seeking Allah's forgiveness, and the messenger prayed for their forgiveness, they would have certainly found Allah ever accepting of repentance, most merciful. But no, by your Lord, they will never be true believers until they accept your prophet as a judge in their disputes and find no resistance within themselves against your decision and submit wholeheartedly. If we had commanded them to sacrifice themselves or abandon their homes, none would have obeyed except for a few. Had they done what they were advised to do, it would have certainly been far better for them and more reassuring. And we would have granted them a great reward by our grace and guided them to the straight path. And whoever obeys Allah and the messenger will be in the company of those blessed by God, the prophets, the people of truth, the martyrs and the righteous. What honorable company. This is Allah's favor and Allah fully knows who deserves it. O oh, believers, take your precautions and go forth either in groups or together. There will be some among you who will lag behind so that if you face a disaster, they will say, Allah has blessed us for not being there among them. But if you return with Allah's bounties, they will say, as if there had been no bond between you. We wish we had been there with them to share the great gain. Let those who, hold, who would sacrifice this life for the hereafter fight in the cause of Allah, and whoever fights in Allah's cause, whether they achieve martyrdom or victory, we will honor them with a great reward. And what is it with you? You do not fight in the cause of Allah and are for oppressed men, women and children who cry out. Our Lord, deliver us from this land of oppressors. Appoint for us a savior. Appoint for us a helper. All by your grace. Believers fight for the cause of Allah, whereas disbelievers fight for the cause of the devil. So fight against Satan's evil forces. Indeed, Satan's schemes are ever weak. Have your prophet not seen those who have been told, do not fight, rather establish prayer and pay arms tax. Then once the order came to fight, a group of them feared those hostile people as Allah should be feared or even more. They said, our Lord, why have you ordered us to fight? If only you had delayed the order for us for a little while. Say, O prophet, the enjoyment of this world is so little whereas the hereafter is far better for those mindful of Allah. And none of you will be wronged, even by the width of the thread of a date stone. Wherever you may be death will overcome you. Even if you were in fortified towers, when something befalls them, they say, this is from Allah. But when something evil befalls them, they say, this is from you. <laughs> say, O oh Prophet, both have been destined by Allah. So what is the matter with these people? They can hardly comprehend anything. Whatever good befalls you is from Allah, and what evil befalls you is from yourself. We have sent you, O Prophet, as a messenger to all people, and Allah is sufficient as a witness. Whoever obeys the messenger has truly obeyed God, but whoever turns away, then know that we have sent, not sent you. O Prophet, as a keeper, whoever obeys the messenger has truly obeyed Allah, but whoever turns away, then know that we have not sent your old prophet as a keeper over them. And they say we obey, but when they leave you, a group of them would spend the night contradicting what they said. Allah record all their, or records all their schemes. So turn away from them and put your trust in Allah. And Allah is sufficient as a trustee of affairs. Do they not then reflect on the Quran? Had it been from anyone other than Allah, they would have certainly found in it many inconsistencies. And when they hear news of security or fear, they publicize it. Had they referred it to the messenger or their authorities, those with sound judgment among them would have validated it. Had it not been for Allah's grace and mercy, you would have followed Satan, except for a few. So fight in the cause of Allah, O Prophet. You are accountable for none but yourself. And motivate the believers to fight, so perhaps Allah will curb the disbelievers' might. And Allah is far superior in might and in punishment. Whoever intercedes for a good cause will have a share in the reward. And whoever intercedes for an evil cause will have a share in the burden. 
and Allah is watchful over all things. And when you are greeted, respond with a better greeting, or at least similarly. Surely Allah is a vigilant reckoner of all things. Allah, there is no God worthy of worship except him. He will certainly gather all of you together on the day of judgment, about which there is no doubt, and whose word is more truthful than Allah's. Why are you dis why are you believers divided into two groups regarding the hypocrites while allow allowed them to regress to disbelief because of their misdeeds? Do you wish to guide those left by Allah to stray? And whoever Allah leaves to stray, you will never find for them a way. They wish you would disbelieve as they have disbelieved, so you may all be alike. So do not take them as allies unless they emigrate in the cause of Allah. But if they turn away, then you seize them and kill them wherever you find them. And do not take any of them as allies or helpers, except those who are allies of a people you are bound with in a treaty or who's wholeheartedly opposed to fighting either you or their own people. If Allah had willed, he would have empowered them to fight you. So if they refrain from fighting you and offer you peace, then Allah does not permit you to harm them. You will find others who wish to be safe from you and their own people, yet they cannot resist the temptation of disbelief or hostility. If they do not keep away, offer you peace, or refrain from attacking you, then seize them and kill them wherever you find them. We have given you full permission over such people. It is not lawful for a believer to kill another except by mistake, and whoever kills a believer unintentionally must free a believing slave and play blood money to the victim's family unless they waive it charitably. But if the victim is a believer from a hostile people, then a believing slave must be freed. And if the victim is from a people bound with you in a treaty, then blood money must be paid to the family along with freeing a believing slave. Those who are unable, let them fast two consecutive months as a means of repentance to Allah. And Allah is all knowing, all wise. And whoever kills a believer intentionally, their real reward will be hell, where they will stay indefinitely. Allah will be displeased with them, condemn them, and will prepare for them a tremendous punishment. O oh, believers, when you struggle in the cause of Allah, be sure of those you fight and do not say to those who offer you greetings of peace, you are not believer, seeking a fleeting worldly gain instead. Allah has infinite bounties in store. You were initially like them, then Allah blessed you with Islam. So be sure indeed, Allah is all aware of what you do. Those who stay at home except those with valid excuses are not equal to those who strive in the cause of Allah with their wealth and their lies. Allah has elevated in rank those who strive with their wealth and their lives above those who stay behind with valid excuses. Allah has promised each a fine reward, but those who strive will receive a far better reward than others. Far superior ranks, forgiveness and mercy from him, and Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. When the angels seize the souls of those who have wronged themselves, scolding them, what do you think you are doing? They will reply, we were oppressed in the land. The angels will respond, was God's earth, sorry, was Allah's earth not spacious for you to emigrate? It is they who will have hell as their home. What an evil destination, except helpless men, women and children who cannot afford a way out. It is right to hope that Allah will pardon them, for Allah is ever pardoning, all forgiving. Whoever emigrates in the cause of Allah will find many safe havens and bountiful resources throughout the earth. Those who leave their homes and die while emigrating to Allah and his messenger, their reward has already been secured with Allah, and Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. When you travel through the land, it's permissible for you to shorten the prayer, especially if you fear an attack by the disbelievers. Indeed, the disbelievers are your sworn enemies. When you all prophet are campaigning with them, and you lead them in prayer, let one group of them pray with you while armed. When they prostrate themselves, let the other group stand guard behind them. Then the group that has not yet prayed will then join you in prayer and let them be vigilant and armed. The disbelievers will wish to see you neglect your weapons and belongings so they could launch a sweeping assault on you. But there is no blame if you lay aside your weapons when overcome by heavy rain or illness. But take precaution. Indeed, Allah has prepared a humiliating punishment for the disbelievers. When the prayers are over, remember Allah whether you are standing, sitting or lying down. But when you are secure, establish regular prayers. Indeed, performing prayers is a duty on the believers at the appointed times. Do not falter in pursuit of the enemy. If you are suffering, they too are suffering. But you can hope to receive from Allah what they can never hope for. And Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. 
Indeed, we have sent down the book to you, O Prophet. In truth, the judge between people by means of what Allah has shown you. So do not be an advocate for the deceitful and seek God's uh, seek Allah's forgiveness. Indeed, Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. Do not advocate for those who wrong themselves. Surely Allah does not like those who are deceitful, sinful. They try to hide the deception from people, but they can never hide it from Allah, in whose presence they plot by night what is displeasing to him. And Allah is fully aware of what they do. Hence you are, you believers are advocating for them in this life. But who will dare to advocate for them before Allah on the day of judgment? Or who will come to their defense? Whoever commits evil or wrongs themselves and seeks Allah's forgiveness will certainly find Allah all forgiving, most merciful. And whoever commits a sin, it is only to their own loss. Allah is all knowing, all wise. And whoever commits an evil or sinful deed, then blames it on an innocent person. They will definitely bear the guilt of slander and blatant sin. Had it not been for Allah's grace and mercy, a group of them would have sought to deceive you, O Prophet. Yet they would deceive none but themselves, nor can they harm you in the least. Allah has revealed to you the book and wisdom, taught you what you never knew. Great indeed is Allah's favour upon you. There is no good in most of their secret talks, except those encouraging charity, kindness or reconciliation between people. And whoever does this seek in Allah's pleasure, we will grant them a great reward. And whoever defies the messenger after guidance has become clear to them and follows a path other than that of the believers, we will let them pursue what they have chosen, then burn them in hell. What an evil end. Surely Allah does not forgive associating others with him in worship, but forgiveness anything else of the world, but forgives anything else of whoever he wills. Indeed, whoever associates others with Allah has clearly gone far astray. Instead of Allah, they only invoke female gods and they actually invoke none but a rebellious Satan, cursed by Allah, who said, I will surely take hold of a certain number of your servants. I will certainly mislead them and delude them with empty hopes. Also, I will order them that they will slit the ears of cattle and alter God's creation. And whoever takes Satan as a guardian instead of Allah has certainly suffered a tremendous loss. Satan only makes them false promises and deludes them with empty hopes. Truly, Satan promises them nothing but delusion. Amen. It is they who will have hell as their home, and they will find no escape from it. And those who believe and do good, we will soon admit, that, admit them into gardens under which rivers flow, to stay there forever. Allah's promise is always true, and, who, and whose word is more truthful than Allah's. Divine grace is neither by your wishes nor those of the people of the book. Whoever commits evil will be rewarded accordingly, and they will find no protector or helper besides Allah. But those who do good, whether male or female, have faith, will enter paradise and will never be wronged, even as much as the speck on a date stone. And who is better in faith than those who fully submit themselves to Allah? Do good and follow the way of Abraham the upright. Allah chose Abraham as a close friend. To Allah alone belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth. And Allah is fully aware of everything. They say, they, they ask you, O Prophet, regarding women. Say, it is Allah who instructs you regarding them. His instruction has already been revealed in the book. Concerning the orphan women, you deprive of their due rights, but still wish to marry. Also helpless children, as well as standing up for orphans' rights and whatever good you do is certainly well known to Allah. If a woman fears indifference or neglect from her husband, there is no blame on either of them if they seek fair settlement, which is best. Humans are ever inclined to selfishness, but if you are gracious and mindful of Allah, surely Allah is all aware of what you do. You will never be able to maintain emotional justice between your wives, no matter how keen you are. So do not totally, so do not totally incline towards one leaving the other in suspense. And if you do what is right and are mindful of Allah, surely Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. But if they choose to separate, Allah will enrich both of them from his bounties. And Allah is ever bountiful or wise. To Allah alone belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth. Indeed, we have commanded those given the scripture before you, as well as you to be mindful of Allah. But if you disobey, then know that to Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and the earth. And Allah is self-sufficient, praiseworthy. To Allah alone belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth. And Allah is sufficient as a trustee of affairs. If it is his will, he can remove you altogether, O humanity, and replace you with the others. 
and Allah is most capable to do so. Whoever desires the reward of this world, then let them know that with Allah are the rewards of this world and the hereafter. And Allah is all hearing, all seeing. All believers, stand firm for justice as witnesses for Allah, even if it is against yourselves, your parents or close relatives, be they rich or poor. Allah is best to ensure their interests. So do not let your desires cause you to deviate from justice. If you distort the testimony or refuse to give it, then know that Allah is certainly all aware of what you do. All believers, have faith in Allah, his messenger, the book he has revealed to his messenger, and the scriptures he revealed before. Indeed, whoever denies Allah, his angels, his books, his messengers, and the last day, has clearly gone far astray. Indeed, those who believed and disbelieved, then believed and again disbelieved, only increasing in disbelief. God will neither forgive them nor guide them to the right way. Allah will neither forgive them nor guide them to the right way. Give good news of a painful punishment to the hypocrites who choose disbelievers as allies instead of believers. Do they seek honor and power through that company? Surely all honor and power belongs to Allah. He has already revealed to you in the book that when you hear Allah's revelations being denied or ridiculed, then do not sit in that company unless they engage in a different topic or else you will be like them. Surely Allah will gather the hypocrites and disbelievers all together in hell. The, hypocr the hypocrites are those who wait to see what happens to you. So if Allah grants you victory, they say to you, were we not on your side? But if the disbelievers have a share of victory, they say to them, did we not have the advantage over you? Yet we protected you from the believers. God, Allah will judge between all of you on the day of judgment. And Allah will never grant the disbelievers a way over the believers. Surely the hypocrites seek to deceive Allah. But he outwits them. When they stand up for prayer, they do it half-heartedly, only to be seen by people, hardly remembering Allah at all, torn between belief and disbelief, belonging neither to those believers nor those disbelievers. And however Allah leaves to stray, you will never find a way for them. O believers, do not take disbelievers as allies instead of the believers. Would you like to give Allah solid proof against yourself? Surely the hypocrites will be in the lowest depths of the fire. And you will never find for them any helper, except those who repent, mend their ways, hold fast to Allah, and are sincere in their devotion to Allah. They will be with you, they will be with the believers, and Allah will grant the believers a great reward. Why should Allah punish you if you are grateful and faithful? Allah is very appre ever appreciative, all knowing. Allah does not like negative thoughts to be voiced, except by those who have been wronged. Allah is all hearing, all knowing. Whether you reveal or conceal a good or pardon an evil, surely Allah is ever pardoning, most capable. Surely those who deny Allah and his messengers and wish to make a distinction between Allah and his messengers, saying, we believe in some and disbelieving others, desiring to forge a compromise. They are indeed the true disbelievers, and we are prepared for the disbelievers' humiliating punishment. As for those who believe in Allah and his messenger, accepting all, rejecting none, he will surely give them their rewards, and Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. The people of the book demand that you will profit, bring them down for them a revelation in writing from heaven. They demanded what is even greater than this from Moses, saying, make Allah visible to us. So a thunderbolt struck them for their wrongdoing. Then they took the calf for worship after receiving clear signs. Still, we forgave them for that after their repentance and gave Moses compelling proof. We raised a mount over them as a warning for breaking their covenant and said, enter the gate of Jerusalem with humility. We also warned them, do not break the Sabbath and took from them a firm covenant. They were condemned for breaking their covenant, rejecting God's signs, killing the prophets unjustly and for saying our hearts are unreceptive. It is Allah who has sealed their hearts for their disbelief. So they do not believe except for a few and for their denial and outrageous accusations against Mary, and for boasting, we killed the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, the messenger of God. But they neither killed nor crucified him. It was only made to appear so. Even those who argue for this crucifixion are in doubt. They have no knowledge whatsoever, only making assumptions. They certainly did not kill him. Rather, God raised him to himself, and God is almighty or wise, and Allah is almighty or wise. Every one of the people of the book will definitely believe in him before his death. And on the day of judgment, Jesus will be a witness against them. We forbade the Jews certain foods that had been lawful to them for their wrongdoing and for hindering many from the way of Allah, taking interest despite its prohibition 
and consuming people's wealth unjustly. We have prepared for the disbelievers among them a painful punishment. But those of them well grounded in knowledge, the faithful who believe in what has been revealed to your prophet and what was revealed before you, especially those who establish prayer and those who pay alms tax and believe in Allah in the last day, to these people we will grant a great reward. Indeed, we have sent revelation to your prophet as we sent revelation to Noah and the prophets after him. We also sent revelation to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob and his descendants, as well as Jesus, Job, Jonah, Aaron, Solomon and to David we gave the Psalms. There are messengers whose stories we have told you already and others we have not. And to Moses, God spoke directly. All were messengers delivering good news and warnings. So humanity should have no excuse before Allah after the coming of the messengers and of all, and Allah is almighty or wise. Yet if you are denied, O Prophet, Allah bears witness to what he has sent down to you. He has sent it with his knowledge. The angels too bear witness and Allah alone is sufficient as a witness. Those who disbelieve and hinder others from the way of Allah have certainly strayed far away. Those who disbelieve and wrong themselves, surely Allah will neither forgive them nor guide them to any path except that of hell to stay there forever and ever. And that is easy for Allah. O oh, humanity, the messenger has certainly come to you with the truth from your Lord. So believe for your own good. But if you disbelieve, then know that to Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and the earth. And Allah is all knowing or wise. O oh, people of the book, do not go to extreme extremes regarding your faith. Say nothing about Allah except the truth. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was no more than a messenger of God and the fulfillment of his word through Mary and a spirit created by a command from him. So believe in Allah and his messengers and do not say Trinity. Stop for your own good. Allah is only one God. Glory be to him. He is far above having a son. To him belongs what is ever in the heavens and what is ever on the earth. And Allah is sufficient as a trustee of affairs. The Messiah would never be too proud to be a servant of Allah nor would the angels nearest to Allah. Those who are too proud and arrogant to worship him will be brought before him altogether. As for those who believe and do good, he will reward them in full and increase them out of his grace. But those who are too proud and arrogant, he will subject them to a painful punishment. And besides Allah, they will find no protector or helper. O oh, humanity, there has come to you conclusive evidence from your Lord and we have sent down to you a brilliant light. As for those who believe in Allah and hold fast to him, he will admit them into his mercy and grace and guide them to himself through the straight path. They ask you for a ruling, O Prophet. Say Allah gives you a ruling regarding those who die without children or parents. If a man dies childless and leaves behind a sister, she will inherit one half of his estate, whereas her brother will inherit all of her estate. If she dies childless, if this person leaves behind two sisters, they together will inherit two thirds of the estate. But if the deceased leaves male and female siblings, a male share will be equal to that of two females. Allah makes this clear to you, so you do not go astray. And Allah has perfect knowledge of all things. Wow. Oh, subhanAllah. Alhamdulillah, that was nice. This guy now. That was that was beautiful, man. I, I I think there was a verse in there for the Quran only. Yes, you know that. If I can, if I can find it again, I don't think I can find it now. Where it tells you to listen to Muhammad Sallallahu judgment, the Prophet's judgment. Uh, what's the time? Oh, seven thirty. What's been going on in the chat? I, I, I can see out of the corner of my eye. I'm thinking of what you guys are speaking about. 7.18, I'm 12 minutes behind. Shall I jump to the end? I'm going to jump up to current. I might have missed a lot of messages, but I'm going to try and catch up with the current speech. Hey, Michael's in the house. Marshal, I thought I was a Christian. Can you explain Quran about Najmul Saqib? Um, no. <laughs> uh, 
Ah, Allah. I apologize. I, 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 I said I was going to say Allah, and, I, and sometimes I slipped into God. I'm, I'm, I, it was hard to, trying to get my brain to slow down. Subhanallah. But I think I did all right. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, subhanallah. So I'm proper like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And it's amazing how many times Allah refers back to himself. Allah is almighty. Allah is Allah's unknowing. Allah is, do you get me? It's, 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 how anyone thinks that somebody in the desert 1400 years ago invented this book? It's mind blowing. And like you people say in Arabic, it's just next level. Um, and I will be attaching the Arabic to these streams later, inshallah. Hey, Jordan names in the house. Salaam alaikum, Akhi. Tell you what, though, I, I could feel that. My, my stomach is burning again and my throat. Uh, Hamza Zem, please repeat that they do not take disbelievers as friends in Arabic. It's Olio, yeah. I, yeah, it didn't say friends. It said allies. In, in, the, in the clear Quran, it doesn't say don't take them as your friends. It says don't take them as your allies over the believers. It's pretty clear. You can see what the guy's done in, in his translation. He's kind of... Um, he's kind of given it his meaning. So when he spoke about, you know, the part about the um, your wives, admonish them... And gently and, and stuff like that. You can see what he what he's done in his translation, mashallah. I wouldn't say it's a sugar coated uh, translation, but it's kind of um, palatable, so you can so you, so you can digest it easily. But the the there is footnotes to it, so if you are reading the clear Quran, you can yourself go to the footnotes to get some more elaboration. Bum, 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 bum. Explain my Quran schedule. Basically, I'm just trying to finish all of the Quran in, in Ramadan in English. Um, I, I break it down to 13 pages a day, inshallah. Um, this is the time I read it um, just before uh, iftar in England in UK GMT's time. And um, by the end of Ramadan, we'll have finished the whole Quran in English. Alhamdulillah. Hey Gabriel! Oh, you mean the link for the membership? I should actually do that. Actually, let me let me do that. So just in just in case anyone anyone wants to become a member, um, let me just see how many members we're on now. Mashallah, we're trying to reach target is five hundred members. Boy, Eid. Mashallah, we're on four hundred and eighty-three members. Allahu Akbar! Just need seventeen more. That's that's awesome. Wow. Proud of you guys. Jazakallah khair for the support. And let me try and find um, oh, the link, the link, the link, the link, the link. Right. So if you want to become a member of the channel um, and get access to the beautiful emojis and to get the join the members only live streams, as well as participate in the rewards of of what we achieve in the, with the with the channel with regards to shahadas and nasiha and things like that. Um, all right, let me just. Uh, I've just put a link in the chat. That link, if you click that link, it should help you become a member. Let me just make sure I can. Let me just pin it. I can't pin it on Streamyard, so I have to pin it using the. Um, I can't believe you guys have managed to get mini lives out of me every day, man. I don't know how that happened. So while I'm here, yeah, everyone go um, 
subscribe to Pondering Soul if you've not already done so. And because he's got some wicked content, and he 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 should have more subscribers than than I have, to be honest with you. So I that. This content is next level. All right, let me just um, let me just pin this. Right, so I've, pin, I've pinned the message now in the chat. So if you want to become a member, alhamdulillah, it's there for you. Completely mashes up uh, the Quran, uh, Quran only uh, claims about the Sunnah. Completely mashes it. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you for your kind support. So beautifully read. Yeah, I think it was better with Allah's name. Although I made a mistake sometimes. I was a god. But um, it's it, it was hard. But um, it took a lot more concentration. But alhamdulillah, I, I think it was better. I agree. Thank you. Um, who was it who said it? What was it? Was it some Terry one or someone who first mentioned that? Brought that up. It was good. Oh, Alhamdulillah, Alexia, MashaAllah. Be careful grocery shopping while fasting. You'll end up with all sorts. Where's the Fred Perry top today, Brother Hamza? Heard they were right wing. Who's right wing? Or oh, Fred Perry? Or oh, do you mean because football hooligans wear them? There's left wing football hooligans. Um, I'm, I'm wearing the Lacoste today. Uh, Michael D'Souza, he says he's found many inaccuracies in the Quran. How do you and others not recognize it? See, and, and here's the problem, I think, Michael, what you're going to do. You're going to find something in the Quran that goes against the Bible, if I'm not wrong. Tell you what, share your share one inaccuracy. Let, 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 you know, let's, we're not going to make it into a big debate, but let's see what the inaccuracy is. And, and let's see if we can solve it for you. Hey, Gabriel's join the pride, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, King Temper as well, alhamdulillah. Beautiful. Jazakallah khair. Welcome to the pride, guys. Welcome to the family. What you're having tonight for iftar? I don't know. I, I haven't a clue. All I know is that I'm having milk cake. And if you've not had milk cake, you need to have milk cake. It is next level. I've ne never had it before. And it's just like something else. I should do some kind of um, recipes and stuff just as a little bit of a, uh, a lighthearted flex as well, I reckon. Have you seen Yusuf Asadullah and Jake ripping apart that? Yeah, beautiful, mashallah. The way they defended my honor was awesome. Alhamdulillah. You had issue with your credit card and had to add another. Nah, you got it, bro. You got it. Uh, no, it didn't. It didn't say that hindsight. It said, "Do not ally with unbelievers against the believers." Yeah. So, hear the context. Do not ally with uh, unbelievers against the believers. Okay. So it's not about being friends with them. I'll be your friend. Uh, yes, we finished. We did. We did uh, Surah Al-Nas in one sitting. Masha Allah. Um, I think um, 
I think Matty Dub will go the same way, to be honest. Yeah, you did. You did. You, you. I think you was. I don't know what you were hearing, but it was clear. It said, "Do not take the unbelievers as allies over the believers." What exact time do you start? Um, okay, UK time. I usually start about. I come on about six forty-five. And about 6.50, um, I start. <laughs> it's true, Khawla. The blessings of COVID-19. I have my own channel, debating people online and reading the Quran in Ramadan, honestly. And I don't think none of it would have happened without COVID. <laughs> it, it, just wouldn't have, it wouldn't even cross my mind. It only came into my mind after... Um, Covid hit us. We stopped going to the park. Then EF Dawa started doing these lives, and then I was thinking, well, it'd be quite interesting to have my own channel with my own flex going on. Um, never even thought about it before. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> okay mr michael you can't be allies with unbelievers against the believers why 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 are you taking um not taking it fully it's what you do allah tells us clear you take bits and pieces and you look for ambiguous things and ignore the explicit things is that we read the clear verse where allah says allah does not pre uh, prevent you from being friends with those who don't seek uh, to fight you and so what are you talking about you need to listen just relax stop the foaming and um, put your answering islam guide down and just listen Oh, pondering soul stuff is next level. He's part of the Sapiens Institute, which is like the high, the high level of Aira. Wow, mashallah, I can see some members have come in. Sorry, I've missed you guys. Let me just... Um, so King Temper I got and Gabriel I got. What have I missed? Right. Oh, I'll test my Arabic here. Uh... Okay, I'm going to say Abu, Abu, oh, I got Abu, Abu, the yeah, no, no, it's a bar, isn't it? Abu, no, I can't read, I can't read it without the vowels, anyway. Welcome, Abu. And Shahid Hussain, mashallah. Welcome, my brother. Joining the pro. Oh, mashallah. And uh, Don Don Juan, mashallah. Welcome to the pride. And Jesse, mashallah. Wow, mashallah. We're going to hit this 500 before Eid. Forget that. What are we on? What members are we on now? That's beautiful. Wow, 489. Allahu Akbar. We are in the arena now, boy. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Gabriel. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Hamza, what do you say to people who say Jesus never sin in the Quran? I get confused because Jesus only mentioned in the Quran to call people to Islam. Unlike Muhammad. Hamza, what do you say to people who say Jesus never sinned in the Quran? Who says that? I get confused because Jesus only mentioned in the Quran to call people to Islam, unlike Muhammad. Uh, could you want to uh, try that again? Maybe maybe do your question twofold? I didn't get it. 
Um, what's the difference with an ally and friend? Can someone explain? Yeah, so an ally is when you join with someone to uh, fight somebody else. Yeah, so listen to the words. Listen to the words. Take them as an ally against your believer, against the believer. An ally against. The, the key word here is against. Not quite sure why you guys are not getting it. Well, to be honest with you, I do know why you're not getting it because you don't want to get it. You don't want it to make sense. Yeah, I miss Irina as well. So I'm giving a little bit of a flex here. Uh, Hamza's there. I apologize for the short altercation we had on TikTok the other day. Uh, I don't. Did we have a? Did we have? A, I don't know. Uh, remind. Well, you don't have to remind me. I forgive you. Whatever it was. Alhamdulillah. Uh, uh, Masha Allah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> wow, that's how far back in the chat I am. Milk cake is the one. If you've not had milk cake in your life, you've got to have milk cake. I'm not joking. You know, I'm, you know, my missus hate me for saying this. I said to her, "Why have you hid this recipe for 19 years?" We've been married 19 years. I've never tasted milk cake. Why is it only now I'm tasting milk cake? Because <laughs> like, I've never tasted it before. And it's like, it's my favorite cake now. You know, my wife asked me today, do you want me to make a different type of cake? I said, no, 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 no. Make me milk cake. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Oh, mashallah. Thank you very much. Thank you much, Nikolai. Like I say, alhamdulillah. The good thing is the stream's up anyway. So you'll be able to... Um... <laughs> Just try it. You make it with three types of milk, I think. Oh, what I'll do, I'll, I'm going to send a picture. I'll, I'll, I'll take a picture. I think I can post it on the, um, I'll post it in the community. Yeah, but I don't know this one. And you know, the best thing is, is you know, when you, when, it, when you have the cake and then you pour on it, you know, um, carnation, you know, uh, evap evaporated milk as well. It's just like, everything just kind of, everything just kind of melts. You know, it's a really... It's it's a it's a wet kind of cake. It's not it's not a dry cake. You know what I mean? It's not a cake you need to have with a cup of tea. It's a cake you can just have. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's what we're talking about because the the key, the key words is against. So who you allying with, and why why as a Muslim allying with a non-believer against a believer and you can't even take that verse in isolation because you can see all the other verses of justice around Allah basically you know there's a verse in there right I don't know if you know this hindsight 2020 I, I think I'll say this for your benefit I think most people know it there's a verse in there that's up in Harvard is it Harvard um you know the law school and um, about the part where it says, uh, do justice, even if it's against yourself and against your family, speak out for justice, even if it's against yourself and your family. Subhanallah. This is like, so wh when you um, take one verse, you could try to make it seem as you like. But if you take that verse about the ally, yeah, and then you add all the other verses around it, you, you can see there's nothing but pure justice going on here. Subhanallah. <laughs> I think I can see two more members. Mashallah. Uh, I think there's a mistake in the Quran. Surah Fasilat uh, created the earth in two days, <gasps> plays mountains in four days, and then he created the seven heavens in two days. Now, there's either a mistake in the Qur'an or you've mistaken it, reading the Qur'an and understanding it. And um, it, it's, it's the latter, mate.
<laughs> Get in the dishes, clicking around. It's true. It's true. Try it hindsight. Honestly, it's it's next level. I'm gonna I'm gonna send a picture of mine. So I'll make sure she's she a nice put some pistachio on top of us and everything. The one that hits me in there is is the one about the fire and it burning the skin and when the skin can't burn no more, we'll give them new skin to burn again. That's the that's the deep one for me. Uh, mashallah, CJB nineteen seventy. Welcome to the pride. Uh, another lioness, mashallah. Uh, can we meet the family? No. Ne next question. You can hear the family, but not see them. <laughs> See, here's the thing. See, friend in Arabic is Sahaba and Sadaq. But the verse that the Islamophobes bring says, don't take non-believers as awliya. So they're lying. We know that. This is what they do. This is what they do. And uh, Do you still realize on TikToks? So I might re-download it. Uh, kind of. Kind of. Zed. MashaAllah. Another one. Welcome to the Prime, man. You have to make milk cake. You can't get it. You probably can get it, but you have to make it. Everyone's going to make milk cake now, Alhamdulillah. Uh, mashallah. I'll see. I'll, I'll I'll see if the missus can teach me how to make it, and then I'll try and make it. Maybe, and I'll do a video making it. Uh, where do you get your shirts from? Um, to be honest with you, I, um, I got my. Fred Perry is from Fred Perry and my Lacoste from Lacoste. All right, here we go. Let's try again, Raf. I will try again. I met a Christian missionary who told you Jesus is a better prophet than Muhammad, because Jesus never sinned unlike Muhammad. I just don't want you to tell people if they told you that. Uh, I would respond that Muhammad uh, never sinned either. And then they're going to have to explain what sin is. Um, so sin is disobeying God. And so then you need to ask, well, what did Muhammad do that disobeyed God? And then what they're going to try to do, they're going to try and bring their Bible as some kind of standard to measure Muhammad Sassam against, which is uh, fallacious. Can't do that. Mashallah with some why? Welcome to the Pride. Mashallah, we've had some good members today. Alhamdulillah. We're on our way. What are we on now? 492. Wow. Eight more to hit the target for Eid. That's amazing. Subhanallah. Uh, should I go to the mosque, even though I'm quarantined for 14 days? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't believe you should. So I, say, I think it's crazy that uh, Tarawi is happening and stuff with this COVID situation. I really do. Uh, oh, yeah. So I just did. I just did. I just did a, just did a member check, didn't I? Uh, 492. Yeah, eight more we need, mashallah. Um, as if I'm Muslim, I left some years ago, but I got back to Islam because Allah and then the EF e e Dawa, EF Dawa, my sister. And welcome back, mashallah. I'm so happy that you found your way back. Alhamdulillah.
All right, I'm going to start wrapping up to finish off the last few comments. Um, it's been a blast as usual. Alhamdulillah, so happy to have everyone here. So nice to see all the green. So nice to see all the new members. Uh, um, Michael, I'd like to say I didn't attack you personally. Yeah, I, I was very courteous with you, just so you know. Uh, Alexa Dawn, if you go to the, have you been to the member link in the chat? That should help you uh, if you just click on that rather than pressing the join button. Do you know how my, my screen is? <laughs> my screen's 32 inch. So I'm not joking. So I, I, I look down here. To the to the comment and then i have to look up to, to go to the uh <laughs> to go to the links <laughs> it's one screen i promise you but it's huge alhamdulillah all right one last uh scout of the comments i'm gonna go i love reading the comments thank you monkey Yeah, EF Dawa, mashallah, is uh, alhamdulillah, is good. Walaikum salam, Bosnian. Salam alaikum, everyone. Um, No, it's not in the kitchen. It's in the living room where we have iftar. So the table's getting prepared behind me. And um, that's what all the clunking around is. Oh, milk cake is next level. Uh, it doesn't open and I don't have a join button. Uh, then I don't know. Uh, honestly, unfortunately. Thanks a lot, Nick. That kind of, thanks for your kind words. Thank you, Michael. We, we do try. We do try. Okay, guys. Um, I'm going to go. Alhamdulillah. Um, Thank you again, Jazakallah Khairan, for joining. And um, thank you for supporting the channel. Uh, thank you for participating in the chat. Thank you for being um, tolerant of our uh, guest trolls and um, non-Muslims. You know, there's no need to be harsh with them. Um, we don't have that vibe. It's, it's, you know, it's Ramadan, mashallah. We try to show some mercy and give them a chance and show us that we're not all about shouting and going red-faced and being angry and, you know, we just we just human beings like everyone else. All right, guys, everybody. Uh, hope your fast go easy if you're still fasting, um, and I hope you all have a delicious uh, iftar if you're about to break your fasts. I'm about to break mine, so gonna send on the lion and um, give bid you all farewell. Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.